If you like my videos, don't forget to follow me on social media to keep up to date with all the latest news regarding my channel and my content. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe below or at the end of the video. Avengers Infinity War is the biggest and most ambitious superhero flick to ever hit our screens. Filled to the brim with grander storytelling than we've ever seen and over 30 of our favourite Marvel Cinematic Universe heroes. Infinity War ends with an enormous cliffhanger, which was expected considering both Infinity War and the currently untitled Avengers 4 have always been pegged as two parts of an enormous finale act for the first decade of the MCU. With two movies set for release between both Avengers outings, questions arose as to how the MCU would place these movies within the timeline and how they'd affect the storytelling and cliffhangers set up in Infinity War. Since these announcements, we know that March 2019's Captain Marvel will be set in the 1990s, meaning the movie will more or less stand on its own as somewhat of a prequel without greatly affecting the current timeline. But a placement of this July's Ant-Man and the Wasp has remained somewhat more curious. Especially given Infinity War co-director Joe Russo has previously noted strong ties between the two movies. In this video I aim to piece together some little hints given in Infinity War, the recent trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp, and a few other sources here and there in an attempt to find its placing and discover how it will connect to Infinity War, Avengers 4 and the future of the MCU. Before I continue I must issue the obligatory major spoiler warning for Infinity War for those who haven't seen it yet. I kind of assume that by this point most everyone has considering it's like the number one movie around the world right now, but if you happen to be one of those who haven't seen it, just just get out of here. I'll also be theorizing a little bit on both Ant-Man and the Wasp and Avengers 4, so if you don't like that kind of stuff, this video just might not be for you either. Let's get into it. To the surprise of some, a few of our heroes skipped out on Marvel's latest adventure, seemingly AWOL in the Avengers' greatest battle yet. Aside from Avengers mainstay Clint Barton Hawkeye, two such missing heroes were Scott Lang, Ant-Man, who last appeared in Captain America Civil War, and Hope Van Dyne, the Wasp, who has yet to step into her superhero costume costume yet on film. During Civil War, Lang was of course recruited by Sam Wilson the Falcon to fight for Team Captain America during the climactic airport battle sequence. By the end of the movie, most of Team Cap, except for of course Cap himself and Bucky, are imprisoned by US Marshals in The Raft, an enormous underwater prison in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Amongst the imprisoned is of course Scott Lang. At the very end of the movie, Cap stages an escape, but according to Infinity War, Cap only took Wilson and Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, with him. That is of course despite the Infinity War prelude comic showing that he rescued all of them and shows Scott Lang at home with his daughter Cassie. Uh, this is unsurprising surprising given that these prelude comics have bizarrely been previously debunked as being non-canon. In Infinity War, a short mention of both Lang and Barton during a conversation between Cap and Rhodey revealed their fates following the escape. Wanting to leave the superhero game for good for the sake of their families, both Lang and Barton took up a deal with the government, allowing them freedom from the raft by placing them under voluntary house arrest. I mean, of course Lang and Barton could have made this deal with the government after their escape, rendering the prelude canon again, but I I'm kind of struggling to understand why the government would make such a lenient deal with two escaped convicts. When Cap mentions Lang's fate in Infinity War, he refers to it in past tense, but doesn't mention how long ago the deal was made, placing Ant-Man and the Wasp at some point between the two year gap that spans both Civil War and Infinity War. If we take a look at the Ant-Man and the Wasp trailer, we're given a short clip which shows the moment in which the FBI placed Lang under said house arrest. I'd like to believe that the timelines of Infinity War and Ant-Man and the Wasp somewhat line up, meaning that Lang was either imprisoned in the raft for a couple of years before being put on house arrest, or if the deal was made earlier, perhaps Ant-Man the Wasp spans the course of a number of years, utilising flashbacks to Lang's house arrest during the movie. I just hope that if this is the case, it doesn't lead to another homecoming-like timeline gaff. Oopsies. In the wake of Civil War, not only is Lang a criminal, but Van Dyne and her father Hank Pym also find themselves on the run from the FBI. This is alluded to in the trailer also, but I'm unsure if they're under investigation for their assistance in Lang's involvement in the airport battle, or if Lang's use of Pym technology in the public has drawn scrutiny and interest from government agencies. Whatever the case, Ant-Man and the Wasp is set to see both Lang and Van Dyne, along with Pym, on the lam, venturing into the quantum realm to rescue Van Dyne's mother Janet, who has been trapped and ever shrinking since she went subatomic in the zone many decades ago. Using the quantum realm as a plot device, there's also the possibility that the laws of time and space will cease to exist for this particular movie, allowing it to span the years following Civil War, as well as breaching into the timeline of Infinity War. 
There is also a possibility that the movie could perhaps introduce new abilities of time and space travel that could perhaps be utilised in Avengers 4 to save the missing heroes from an extra dimension. I did a short video last week on my theories for Avengers 4 involving thoughts on where the heroes are and how time and quantum travel could lead to their discoveries after their disappearance. Check that out if you're at all interested in my further and more detailed thoughts on that. Both Ant-Man and the Wasp have been confirmed to be appearing in Avengers 4 with set pictures showing Lang, Tony Stark, Steve Rogers and Bruce Banner in what seems like a time travel sequence back to the events of the Battle of New York from the first Avengers movie. In these shots the heroes appear to be using what seems to be some kind of new PIM tech that could possibly aid in the time and quantum travel required in the movie. It's this very tech that I'm certain will be introduced to in Ant-Man and the Wasp. With Alain and Van Dyne are recruited by Stark to aid in the rescue mission and battle during Avengers 4 or whether they somehow meet up on an otherworldly place is unknown and until we see Ant-Man and the Wasp, we can't really have a solid answer. It's also worth mentioning that Doctor Strange has mastered the art of dimensional travel, briefly travelling to the quantum realm during his own movie. If he and his fellow missing Avengers find themselves in an outer realm, he could utilise his powers in a self-escape attempt. It's also interesting to note that the upcoming Captain Marvel movie has been said to include elements of quantum travel and sequences taking part in quantum realms, with quantum physicist and Marvel Studios consultant Dr. Spiros Michalakis mentioned mentioning both Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel in the same sentence in a recent interview. Using my wildest guesses and my desired outcome, I'd hope to see Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel and Avengers 4 find themselves converging on the timeline. Best case scenario for me would see the quantum realm as the one thing that ties the movies together, with the characters perhaps meeting in the middle or just simply having the realm used as an arc device that links them up. The idea of quantum travel as a plot device also opens up so many exciting possibilities for the future of the MCU following Avengers 4 and the conclusion of phase three. I would love to see Ant-Man and the Wasp ending with the destruction of San Francisco around Lang and Van Dyne, and perhaps the fading away of Hank Pym in the same vein as the Avengers at the end of Infinity War. This would lead Lang and Van Dyne on yet another personal rescue mission during the course of Avengers 4, which could also lead to their assistance in the plight of the Avengers. I'd also love to see Captain Marvel concluding with Carol Danvers receiving Nick Fury's call for help as seen in the post credits of Infinity War. Another shameless plug to an another of my videos right here. Whether Danvers receives this as a message from the future or while she's in some kind of quantum realm needed to employ the use of time and quantum travel again remains to be seen. This could possibly explain Danvers absence from the MCU all this time but we're getting just a little bit off track here. Before we close this video off, I want to briefly touch on the idea of Marvel setting up a new roster of Avengers after the fourth movie, which will be the finale of the first three phases and the franchise's first major story arc. Since Age of Ultron, the MCU has been slowly filtering in new characters, which seemingly could form a new Avengers faction. We already know that Chris Evans is hanging up the shield after Avengers 4, and it's likely Robert Downey Jr. won't spend much more time in the Iron Man suit, though it would be nice to see him stick around in some kind of mentor role. Over the next few years, I'm sure that other fanning Avengers will follow suit as well. The Avengers roster has changed a plethora of times over the course of their five decade history in the comics, and Marvel Studios of course will want to keep their lucrative Avengers franchise alive, so it makes sense that they'll take cues from source material and a new roster will be formed, assuming they're all back in action at the end of Avengers 4. Marvel has of course already spoken about how Spidey will become the major character in the next chapter of the MCU, somewhat taking the reins from Iron Man. At that, it would makes sense for Ant-Man and the Wasp to also join the new roster, and given that the two were founding Avengers in the comics, well technically Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne were, it would be somewhat poetic. Or in the words of Hope Van Dyne. It's about damn time. For now, these are simply just my theories. Ant-Man and the Wasp opens in theatres worldwide this June, and we should hopefully get some solid answers then. Do you agree with my theories? Do you disagree with them? Let me know yours down below. If this is the first of my videos you've watched and you've enjoyed it and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, then please hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now. Give me a little bit of support. And while you're feeling generous, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It does a great deal in getting my videos out there. Look guys, I hope I'll see you all again soon. Until next time, take care and I hope you have a marvellous day. Excelsior!